we are asked to evaluate the following integral, and you are probably completing this question within the section on trigonometric substitution. So we've included the table on that method below, but in order to be able to use this method, we have to take our expression that is underneath the square root, and we have to write it as either the difference of two perfect squares, or as the sum of two perfect squares. And right now we don't have that because we actually have three separate terms rather than just having two terms as we have in these expressions. So we have to find a way of rewriting the three terms into two terms and we're going to do that by completing the square. So when completing the square, what you're going to do is you're going to take the coefficient of your variable, t in this case, and you're going to do two things to that coefficient. Number one, you're going to divide that coefficient by two. And then the second thing you'll do is you'll square that result. So for example, if we take negative two, which is the coefficient of our variable, and we divide that by two and then square it, we would end up with negative one squared, which of course is positive one. So what you'll do is you'll come underneath this square root and you're gonna be using this little magic number that we just obtained. So you're gonna have t squared minus 2t. Now before you write plus 37, what you'll do is actually write in that magic number. So in this case, it's gonna be plus one. So far, so good. And then you write the plus 37. But since you wrote down plus one, you've changed the expression overall. And you're not allowed to do that. You can't take a problem, just change it at whim. So what you'll do is you'll include a minus one to essentially offset the plus one that you included. So in other words, plus one, whoops, that was supposed to be a highlighter. This plus one and this minus one, when you combine them are actually zero. So in effect, you haven't changed the expression. But why would we do this? It's because this right here, t squared minus two t plus one, that can be factored into t minus one times t minus one, or more succinctly, you can do t minus one squared. So that is actually going to be convenient for us as we will see. And then when you combine these, you're going to get a plus 36. So that's a way of re-expressing the quantity that was underneath the square root. So far, so good. So now you can look at your table of trig expressions and you might be able to spot which one you're gonna be using. Look at the middle expression. You have a constant squared plus a variable squared. And if you look at our expression, especially if you kind of flip it around as follows, you can rewrite the 36 as six squared and then you have plus t minus one squared. And that indeed matches what we have in the middle here. We have a constant squared plus a variable term squared. The only difficulty here is we're just supposed to have our variable squared. Right now we have our variable minus one squared. So this doesn't quite perfectly fit the middle expressions format, but we can make it fit by doing a u substitution. We're going to let u equal t minus one if we differentiate both sides of that equation, we get du is equal to one dt, or just du equals dt. And then we can come back and rewrite this again. So the dt in the numerator will be replaced by du over the square root of six squared plus. Now inside the parentheses, you have t minus one, but we let t minus one equal u. So you'll actually have plus u squared. This is the key format because it definitely now matches this middle template. We have a variable squared plus, excuse me, we have a constant squared plus a variable squared. And that's what we have right over here, a constant squared plus a variable squared. So now we can actually initiate the trig substitution. We are told to let our variable equal a tangent theta. So in our case, we're going to let our variable, which happens to be u right now, equal our a tangent of theta. Note that our a was six. We'll then differentiate this equation. We'll have du equals six secant squared of theta. We all know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then don't forget the d theta. And so now we make further substitutions. We're substituting for this expression right now. You look at the numerator of that expression and you have a du. And we can see that du is equal to six secant squared of theta d theta. And then you have a square root underneath. Let's rewrite the six squared as 36 plus 
Now we have our variable squared, our u squared. Remember, u was 6 tan theta. So you're actually going to have 6 tan theta, and then don't forget to square it like that. Next thing you'll do is simplify this. The numerator right now is going to remain the same. Underneath the square root, you can go ahead and square the 6 tan theta. So you'll have 36 tangent squared of theta. And then the way that the procedure works is you're always going to be left with a greatest common factor. In this case, it's 36. So we're going to factor out a 36 underneath that square root. So you'll have 36. You'll be left with 1 plus tangent squared of theta under there. And then what you are left with after factoring out your GCF is an identity. If you go back up to the table, we can see that 1 plus tangent squared is actually equal to secant squared. So you'll make a handy substitution here. We'll take out this 1 plus tan squared and replace it with secant squared. So now you have the square root of 36 secant squared of theta down there. And continuing in the spirit of simplifying, you have the square root of a perfect square. So that can be simplified as well. Basically, just take the square root of 36, which is 6, and then the square root of sec squared is just secant. Basically, the square root and the squaring cancel each other out. We seem to be getting somewhere here because now these sixes cancel, and then you can cancel a factor of secant. You can cancel one of the factors in the denominator, one of the factors in the numerator. That leaves you with just secant theta in the numerator. So finally, we have a pretty simple integral of secant of theta d theta. Now, most professors would allow a reference table of integrals in order to proceed from this point. You could actually figure out the integral of sec theta, but frankly, we've done enough work as it is. It does turn out, and you can look this up in a table of integrals, that the integral of secant of theta is simply the natural log of the absolute value of your secant of theta plus tangent of theta and then you have your constant of integration. Now, we're not done yet. Even though we've integrated, we have an answer that is expressed in terms of theta, whereas our original problem was in terms of t. So we have to kind of backtrack, and essentially we have to replace theta with t somehow. Now, if we scroll back, we recall that we had made a substitution, pardon me, right there, that u was equal to 6 tangent of theta. Let's talk about that for a moment. So we had said u is equal to 6 tangent of theta. Now, if you divide both sides of that by 6, you would have u divided by 6 is equal to tangent of theta. So this tangent of theta right here, we're going to end up replacing it with u divided by 6. However, the secant of theta also needs to be substituted or replaced. And in order to see how to do that, what you'll need to do is draw a right triangle. And you're always going to base your right triangle off of your original substitution here. So we can see that the tangent was equal to u over 6. Let's mark theta right here. We know tangent is the ratio of opposite to adjacent. So the opposite side to the angle would be u and the adjacent would be 6. You could then do Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse. And if you did that, you would see that the Hypotenuse is equal to the square root of 36 plus u squared. Now, in order to obtain secant of theta, recall that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Now, we all know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so secant would be the reciprocal. It would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Well, the hypotenuse of our right triangle was the square root of 36 plus u squared. The adjacent side was 6. So there's your secant theta, and then again, your tan theta is u over 6. So we can go ahead and rewrite this as the natural log of the absolute value. Again, our secant theta will be the square root of 36 plus u squared, all over 6, plus the tan theta, which is u over 6. Pretty good, but we still haven't gotten it in terms of t. Remember, we had to replace theta with a t rather than with a u. But that's okay. We go all the way back up to our original, original substitution. And where is it? It's right there. u was equal to t minus 1. So wherever you see a u in your answer right now, you're going to substitute it with a t minus 1. So you'll have 36 plus 
t minus 1 squared over 6 plus t minus 1 over 6. And that would be the correct answer to the integral.